me begin by thanking AARP for the invitation uh, to speak here this morning and for conducting this important study that they are releasing today. So we have a retirement security problem in this country, and it's worse in New York City than almost any place else. Uh, data show that New Yorkers uh, are substantially below the median in terms of access to workplace retirement plans, levels of retirement savings, and levels of retirement income. And let me actually acknowledge Teresa Gilarducci from the New School, who really has done the research that provides us with that data. Uh, at present, three quarters of workers in the U.S. rely completely or overwhelmingly on Social Security for their retirement income. So the fabled three-legged stool of Social Security, pensions, and savings really only exists for the top quartile of U.S. retirees today. And it's worse for women, and it's worse for people of color. In New York City, according to the Fiscal Policy Institute, white households receive nearly three times the investment and retirement income as do black households, more than three times that received by Asian households, and more than five times the investment and retirement income received by Latino households. So what does it mean for the future of retirement that fully one-third of Gen Xers in the AARP survey do not expect any income from Social Security which today is providing the overwhelming majority of income for three quarters of retirees. Well, first of all, I happen to think that their fear as expressed in this survey is misplaced, that it is a product of the right-wing scare campaign that seeks to convince people that Social Security is a Ponzi scheme that's about to go broke, when in fact, Social Security is on solid ground and it could be easily strengthened and put on this on sound financial footing such that my own as yet unborn grandchildren would be able to retire on it many decades from now. The survey also shows that 38% of New York City voters aged 35 to 69 have no retirement savings at all. Presumably this group will have to try to survive on Social Security alone, which currently I think folks know pay, pays a median benefit of about $15,000 a year. Now, this situation of 38% of folks trying to survive on 15,000 a year is obviously a problem for them, but it's also a problem for the city of New York. Even if a majority of the 61% of survey respondents who say they are likely to leave New York in the future do leave, and that alone would be a huge problem for the city as we need these generations energy and creativity and diversity to continue to make New York the world's economic, cultural, and intellectual leader. Those who continue to realize that the grass is not greener outside of the five boroughs will, I'm sure, both give back to the city and also have issues that will need to be addressed. As life expectancies continue to increase with the 85 and over demographic expected to increase at the highest rate of all ages, more and more of us will be living 20 or more years after we stop working. Even for those with some retirement savings, the likelihood increases that we will outlive those savings. And as we age and our health needs increase, we will become increasingly dependent on city and state programs to provide for our basic needs. So the city as well as the state have to consider the fiscal risks created by the inability of our residents to have enough income throughout their retirement years to maintain their standard of living and provide for their needs. The reality is that improving retirement secu security is not only good for individuals, but it's the right thing to do for our communities as well. We need a national solution to address this issue of retirement insecurity. The solution should be based on strengthening the best retirement program we have, Social Security, in order to provide more robust benefits to lower and middle income retirees. However, Social Security by itself will never be the sole solution. In addition, we need to ensure universal access to workplace retirement plans that enable market forces and the long-term power of compound interest to provide enough lifetime income in combination with Social Security for all workers to maintain their standard of living 
throughout their life after retirement. This type of solution has advanced in recent years in, in countries such as Australia and Great Britain. However, the current political environment in our nation's capital makes such a solution about as likely in the next few years as Donald Trump becoming the 45th president of the United States. So since, and I, I, I apologize to anybody, any Trump supporters in the audience I may have offended. Uh, so since many cities and states realize that they will be responsible and will need to foot the bill for the increasing inability of their residents to maintain their standard of living throughout retirement, governments are beginning to look for ways they can help them do that. Starting with Massachusetts and California in 2012, there has been a blizzard of activity across the country, helped immeasurably, by the way, by the efforts of AARP. Four states have now passed laws to create state-sponsored retirement programs. At least six states are conducting studies, and legislation has been introduced in at least 15 other states, meaning that roughly half of the states are considering or implementing some initiative to enhance retirement saving. The AARP study released today indicates that 76% of the New York City voters surveyed support a government-sponsored retirement savings option, with only 11% opposed. Those are pretty good numbers. So while federal retirement law precludes local plans that are identical to the national retirement solutions that would be preferable, we can make local plans mirror the principles of the best approaches. These include universal access and portability, low fees and best-in-class plan design, and built-in lifetime retirement income. One of the major considerations for uh, these states and for any cities such as New York that might consider creating retirement programs for private sector workers is the federal law that governs private sector retirement plans, the fabled Employee Retirement Income Security Act of 1974 known by its friends and enemies as ERISA. ERISA preempts, preempts state or local legislation that seeks to regulate private sector employee benefit plans. However, it does not prohibit states or cities from creating pri retirement plans for private sector workers as long as such plans are either in compliance with ERISA or exist outside the confines of ERISA. There are many variations that would fit into these parameters and I am neither a lawyer, nor an economist, nor an investment manager, all of whom are on the panel that followed this morning, but I have done a fair amount of work in this area, so I'll share a couple of thoughts on it. One approach that many states are adopting or considering is to create a payroll deduction IRA, or individual retirement account. IRAs are not covered by ERISA, but they also cannot be funded through direct contributions uh, from employers. Employees contribute their own money to IRAs, but very few, something like 5% of employees without access to a workplace retirement plan actually do so. So the idea behind many of the new state plans, based on the science of behavioral economics, and I might say I find that to be one of the least dismal aspects of the dismal science, is to require employers that don't offer workplace retirement plans to automatically enroll their employees in the publicly sponsored payroll deduction IRA with a default contribution, which employees can adjust up or down or opt out of altogether. The experience with auto enrollment in employer plans is that the vast majority of employees in the neighborhood of 80% or more stay in the plan if they are automatically enrolled. On the other hand, if employees must affirmatively opt into the plan, the enrollment rates are much lower, substantially below 50% in most cases, especially when there are no employer matching contributions, as is the case with payroll deduction IRAs since employers can't contribute. However, the question of whether auto-enrollment with opt-out is consistent with the voluntary participation that's required for a payroll deduction IRA to enjoy the safe harbor from ERISA falls into an untested gray area of the law. And ultimately, that may be a question for the federal courts to decide if somebody challenges one of the state plans utilizing this approach. As I mentioned earlier, states and cities could also create an ERISA plan that would allow for employer contributions, but ERISA plans must be voluntary. 
ERISA prohibits required participation by employers or, or required contributions into an employee benefit plan. So we don't have evidence the way we do with auto enrollment that a state or city merely creating an ERISA plan will actually increase private sector workplace retirement plan coverage. So it's my belief that merely building a better retirement mousetrap will not lead to material changes in retirement savings rates. The reasons for states and cities to establish government-sponsored retirement plans are to combine the power of government with the findings of behavioral economics to enable all or virtually all workers to save for their own retirement through payroll deduction. We do need to build a better mousetrap. The failings of traditional corporate 401k and other defined contribution plans are well known. But the key to making these state and city plans successful will be the government making sure that all workers have access to a high quality retirement plan that will enable them to save for their retirement throughout their working life in order to supplement Social Security. Um, I'll close with one final point, particularly relevant for the boomers and Gen Xers survived by, sur sur surveyed by AARP. Even if someone is fairly late in their working life without any retirement savings, putting money aside in a low cost and effective retirement savings vehicle can still make a material difference in their lifetime retirement income. Who knows what the best annuity deal in America is? Social Security. It's not TIA craft. Maybe they're your second, okay. <laughs> we have a lot of TIA craft uh, uh, partisans over here. Um, no, the best deal is Social Security. And the longer you wait to take Social Security, the better the deal. Every year you delay taking Social Security past your normal retirement age, you get an 8% increase in your annuity. So if you can save enough money just to delay your Social Security by three years, you'll get a 25% increase in your monthly check for the rest of your life. You go try to find that on the, uh, uh, in, in the private sector. I'm not here to endorse a specific course of action or proposal, but it's very clear that retirement insecurity is a serious problem for New York and that we should find the political will to take the steps necessary to allow all workers to save for their retirement so that they, so that they can maintain their standard of living as long as they live once their working lives are over. Thank you.